Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video course where we talk a lot about advanced topics of linear algebra. And indeed, in today's part 39, we will talk about so-called direct sums of vector spaces. And these will be needed for the definition of our Jordan normal form. However, before we start with the definition and the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget that you can find a lot of additional material with the link in the description. Okay, then let's immediately start by considering a general vector space V. And now inside this vector space, we could find a lot of different subspaces. So let's say we have one subspace u1 and another one u2. And there you might already know that we can put both together to get a third one out. But obviously in general, the union of both subspaces would not form a subspace again. Simply because not every linear combination lies in the union again. Therefore, the correct definition for the new subspace would be to take all possible linear combinations in one set. And now it should be clear that every linear combination can be written with exactly two vectors. We just have to take one from u1 and one from u2 and add them. This is all because we already know that u1 and u2 form subspaces already. So for example, if we want to scale the second part here, it's already included in the second subspace. Therefore, it's also clear that this new set is also a subspace in V. And the common name for that is to write u1 plus u2. And please note, this is a notation one also uses if we consider just subsets in V. However, in this case, we also only would get a subset out. In fact, for subspaces, we can say a lot more, and for that reason, we put this into a new definition. And the assumptions are exactly the same as before. We have a general f vector space v and two subspaces u1 and u2. And naturally, we don't have to say anything about the dimensions of the subspaces. We just need two subspaces in the same vector space. So for example, you could visualize u1 as something two-dimensional and u2 as a one-dimensional one. And there it's important to remember that we always have a non-empty intersection because the zero vector lies in both subspaces. And indeed, in this definition, we only want to consider this case that the intersection is exactly only the zero vector. In a rough way, you could say that the two subspaces u1 and u2 should be linearly independent. So they don't share any direction in the vector space V. Hence, exactly in this case, we use a new symbol, which is a circled plus sign. And as you might already guess, this one is what we call the direct sum of the two subspaces. However, the definition of this new subspace looks exactly the same as before, because it's actually the same, just with an additional information. So it's not so hard to remember, because it's a simple definition, a nice symbol, and just called direct sum. And in order to make it clear, let's immediately look at an example. So let's say our surrounding vector space is simply given by C2. Then, for example, you could take the span of a single vector and let's say we take 1, 1. And on the other hand, let's take the span of 0, 1. Hence, the symbol for the direct sum is allowed here and what we get out is C2 again. This means the whole vector space C2 can be written as this direct sum. In fact, this is a practical thing we use a lot to describe given subspaces. So you see, it's an important property you should remember that the direct sum of subspaces is always a subspace again. Indeed, this is what we have discussed at the start of the video. If we form the sum of two subspaces, we get a subspace out again. And moreover, we can also say something about the dimension of this direct sum. Just look at the example and then you see the dimensions of the two subspaces are just added. In the example, we just have a one-dimensional space plus a one-dimensional space and we get out a two-dimensional space. And this works in general because by assumption, the two subspaces go in completely different directions which simply means that we can add up the linearly independent directions. And obviously the maximal dimension we can get out 
is the dimension of our surrounding vector space V. Okay, so with that direct sum of subspaces in mind, we can go back to our Jordan normal form. So you could say that this will be our application of the direct sum. This means we also fix our vector space V as c to the power n and take a general square matrix A. And now if we have an eigenvalue of A, which we call lambda, we can define a new matrix N. And there please recall, this one is simply given as A minus lambda identity matrix. Moreover, in the last videos we have already learned that we have a whole chain of generalized eigenspaces. This means we start with the zero vector space and then comes the kernel of n to the power one and then comes the kernel of n to the power two and so on. And this whole chain will end at a given index, which we call the fitting index. This means after this fitting index d, we actually have the equality. And of course, in the simplest case, this d could be one as well. In this case, the chain would be really small. And on the other hand, the largest chain we have if this fitting index is equal to the dimension n. So you see, every other number in the middle is also possible for the fitting index. Moreover, in addition to the chain with the kernels, we also have a chain for the range. This one we also have discussed a lot, and we have shown that we have the same fitting index there. This means after the range of n to the power d, we have the equality as well. And now it turns out, that at this level of the fitting index, we can form the direct sum of the kernel and the range. And indeed, this direct sum is actually equal to the whole vector space Cn. Therefore, we can just write Cn is equal to this direct sum. And please note, this direct sum is only correct for the fitting index. And please recall, this means that both subspaces here span completely different directions. And obviously, this is what we want to prove now. So you definitely remember that the direct sum is only allowed to write if the intersection of both subspaces is only equal to the zero vector. So more precisely, if we take a vector x from this intersection, we should be able to show that this is equal to the zero vector. And now the nice thing is that this intersection immediately gives us two equations we can work with. And on the other hand, being in the range means that we find another vector in Cn, which is mapped to x. So we could write there is a u in Cn such that n to the power d applied to u is equal to x. And now the good thing is that this totally fits to the first equation because we can put that x into the first equation. So let's call this one star and let's use it on the left hand side. Hence we have n to the power d applied to n to the power d u. Therefore we can simplify that to n to the power 2d applied to u. So the conclusion is that our u here lies actually in the kernel of n to the power 2d. This is a nice result because we know this index is higher than our fitting index, which means we can use that we have equalities on the right here. Hence nothing will change here and it's actually the same kernel as the one of n to the power d. This means if we apply n to the power d to u, we get out the zero vector. And now at this point we can use the definition of our u, which tells us that n to the power d u is equal to x as well. So the conclusion is that x was zero all along. And this is what we wanted to show. It means that the intersection here is trivial. So in fact, it's allowed to write the direct sum between both subspaces. And now the only thing that remains to show is that the direct sum is actually also equal to Cn. However, this is something we can immediately show by considering the dimensions of the spaces. So here we just need to know that the dimensions of the subspaces add up in the direct sum. This means we have the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of the range. So I guess there you immediately recognize the famous rank nullity theorem. For matrix, it means that the nullity plus the rank is equal to the number of columns. So in our case, this is just given by n. 
So this implies that our direct sum here is an n-dimensional subspace in Cn. And there you know that the only n-dimensional subspace in Cn is Cn again. And this is what we wanted to show. This direct sum is equal to the whole space. And there we have it. With that we have a nice decomposition of the space Cn just by giving a matrix and an eigenvalue. And exactly this fact will immediately lead to our Jordan normal form. And there I would say, let's do that in the next video. So I really hope I meet you there again and have a nice day. Bye bye.